Today on Ask This Old House. This seems safe. I'm heading to Richmond, Virginia to show you how to tighten it up. You can see that they actually toenailed through the base of the newel into the tread and also added this filler block which they toenailed into the riser. And the reason that didn't work is because they never got into any structure. Do you have paint on your old hardware? I'll show you how to take it off. Us electricians seem to have a language that's all our own, from a single gang old work box to a fan rated pancake ceiling box. I'll help you figure out what we're talking about. If you have a dinosaur of a thermostat like this, there's a new way to upgrade to a smart thermostat without having to run new wires. Hey Nathan. Hey Kenneth, how are you doing? Doing well. Welcome to Richmond. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is my wife Micah. Hey, Micah, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Yeah, welcome to our home. It's a 1927 Sears kit home. Oh wow, a kit home. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nice. 1927. That was a pretty aggressive idea that they had there to let a homeowner go through a catalog and pick out all their parts and pieces. And then they'd uh, package it up and send it out on a railroad cart to you. Yeah. Do you know what model you guys have? It's the Van G. Oh, the Van Jean, nice. nice. Yeah. Well, it's really aged well over the years. Yeah, thanks. We've replaced the floors down here on the first level, and then this was the big project that we undertook. This used to be two separate rooms. We had a wall here, okay, and which separated our dining room from our kitchen. The kitchen was really small. Yeah, I wanted a bigger sink and a little more cook space, and so we started thinking about getting a bigger sink, which led to different cabinets, and next thing you know, it's all open air. So. Quick little renovation, nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So is this the new post you guys wrote me about? Yeah, so this yeah. is what I emailed you about. As you can see, the it's a little wobbly and squeaky, and um, yeah, wasn't sure if you could help us out. I think I can help you tighten this up. Let me get some tools and we'll get started. Perfect. Perfect. So guys, what you have here is a newel with a square base, but then below this is actually turned to a dowel. You can tell that, but if I pull it to the side, oh wow, yeah. oh. a dowel under there. Yeah. yeah. So the way they installed this is they framed out a pocket and slid it down inside. So over the last you know, about 100 years, people have been coming down and racking on it. Yeah. yeah. And this problem is not new. You can see that they actually toenailed through the base of the newel mm -hmm. into the tread, and also added this filler block, which they toenailed into the yeah. riser. But the reason that didn't work is because they never got into any structure. I want to get into the stringer. And the way I'm going to do that is come through the newel post, through the block, through the riser, and get into the stringer to really lock it all together. Okay. And I know where that is because I'm going to look right on top. Oh, yeah. You can see the nails that they drove down through the tread mm -hmm. into the stringer. So we have about an inch and a half of material that we're looking for that we can drive those structural screws right into. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is plumb up the newel post before we resecure it. Let us know when it looks plumb. And looks good. Looks good. All right. I'm going to use these uh, cedar shims. It'll help protect the wall and the newel post, but also offer a little fine tune adjustment. There we go. All mm -hmm. right. I'm just going to mark where the screws will go. All right. I'm going to use a Forstner bit to create a pocket for the head of the structural screw. I've already marked the depth on the drill bit using some painter's tape so I know how far to drill in. All right, you keep it square, mm -hmm. and I'll keep you level. Great. We don't want to split the newel post, the block, or the stringer with the structural screw, so we're going to pre-drill using a 3 16 bit. Great. You'll notice I taped off the depth on this drill bit as well. Perfect. All right. All right, let's start again. All right, Micah, you're up. 
To tighten up this railing, we're going to use six inch structural screws. Come down just a little bit. There you go. All right. Okay. Do the next one. All right. All right, we should be pretty tight. Give it a shake and see what you think. Oh wow, that's much better. Nice. Much better, yeah. a little less squeak to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, good. All we have to do is patch these holes. Since we drilled three quarter inch holes with the uh, Forstner bit, then I just picked up some three quarter stock dowel. We're gonna glue it up, drive it in, and then we'll cut it flush. Nice. Yeah. Get that out of the way. All right, great cut. We'll touch it up with some 220 sandpaper and then we'll add some paint. All right, we just need a little bit of paint. So let's do this. Let's work right off the, off the lid just for this. That works. Little touch up. Thank you. Looks good. Thanks. All right, guys, you're all set. What do you think? This is awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you yeah, for coming. Thank you for coming to Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Hey, Morrow. Hey, Kevin. What's for lunch? Well, we're cooking a uh, um, hardware Zupa today. <laughs> Zupa. It's going to be very nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I presume we're talking about getting paint off of old hardware. Man, how many times have we seen this, right? More often, more often. So we presume that you're going to an old house, so you see like those beautiful old doors. You expect to see some nice hardware. Yeah. But all of a sudden, you look at this. Right. But underneath it, you know, you usually have something good to work with, right? I mean, there is nice hardware buried underneath all those layers of paint. Absolutely. So, so uh, we've seen this before, right? Sometimes a slow cooker and boil it in there and some kind of solution. Well, yes, there we go. There's a lot of different ways people use di different techniques like um, acetone, uh, rubbing alcohol, or even paint strippers mm -hmm. to remove the uh, paints off hardware. But I like to use a, uh, a hot water and baking soda. Old family recipe right here? Always works. <laughs> All right, is this in there yet? Yep, we're gonna add it right now. Okay. There's not the right amount that you can just can't, not, can't overdo it. Can't overdo it. Right, it's baking soda. Yep. Not that aggressive. Not really. So that should be good enough. Okay. I'm gonna put that aside. Now we're gonna put some of the hardware in there. All right. Well, I don't want to do all this, so you pick a this. couple. Pick one, and we go from that. Well, I'll pick this one here. You pick all right. one. All right. Let's do it. I love those old hinges. Let's dip right in there. And uh, this guy, the, the plate. The red one. We'll see if that actually works. Let's do another one. Let's put this window locks. Right there. Maybe we get this one too. Let's do it. <laughs> right? Hardware Zupa. Obviously, if you're using this cooking pot for stripping paint, make sure that you do not use it for cooking anymore. Well, Kevin, it's been like 15 minutes. Let's check it out. Gloves on. All right. Ready. Let's move this one out. Let's get this one here too. Oh, yep. Take a look at that. Peeling off. So check this out, Marl. It's just look at it. It's just a sheet of paint. It came right off almost you one can piece. Move with your fingers. Look at that. Peeling it right off. What? Oh, look at that. Holy smokes, that's awesome. That comes right off. Yeah. All right, if there's any paint that didn't come off so easy, so we're gonna use this nylon soft bristle brush. Soft uh, brush? Yeah, don't use the, the wire ones. They're gonna scratch the hardware all over. So the metal brushes, the wire brush is too aggressive. Absolutely. So nylon softy. Nylon softy, that's there. the one to go for. 
piece of cake, right? See, when you use the right technique, everything comes so easy. With, with your fingers, take a look at that. Love it, I love it. Look at that, it's almost good as new, huh? Look at that. Just clean them off and they, could, they can go right back on the door that they came from. All right, check that out. That looks nice. Huh? Almost good as new. Look at mine. All right, although, as easy as this was, we wouldn't have to have done any of it if people didn't paint their hardware. That would be the easiest way. So don't paint your hardware. No, don't All do right. it. Thank you, Mauro. Good tips. You're welcome. Thank you. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Hey, Kevin, how are you? All right. Looks like you got the letters about folks not knowing what to buy in the electrical aisle. It's a confusing aisle sometimes. Right? You think you know what you need, you go down there, and all of a sudden, poof, all these options, and then you realize you have no idea what you need. Big aisle of boxes. So what do we do? Uh, let's start with the easiest and the most common, new work. New work, okay. And when you say new work, not new work that you're doing that Saturday. You're right. talking about new construction. Not a new job, but the type of construction. So new construction, open frame. Okay. So for something like that in a residence, we typically use new work plastic boxes like these. Mm -hmm. uh, and the advantage of these is they're fairly quick. We can nail them right onto a stud, wire them quickly, and then cover them up with the drywall. And they come with a little nailing flange and oftentimes the nail's embedded. Exactly. And you've got enough room to bang that in, and so they go, they set themselves. A little tab to set the spacing. And look what you get. And that's the finish. And they're usually always plastic? Not always plastic. We tend to use plastic more often than not when we're doing new construction. Uh, sometimes you do run into metal. Mm -hmm. And that is an option as well. Uh, depends on the type of cable you have. So if we're using non-metallic cable. With a, with a plastic box. We'll try to do the plastic. If we run into metal clad cable, we want to use a metal box. Gotcha. And what is it about the metal boxes that we like? For the metal box, this is actually designed with a clamp to hold that metal clad cable. Also accepts a ground screw, and that lets you ground and bond everything together. We want to make sure the metal box is grounded. Correct. And this is new work as well, so you presume that you've got enough room to screw Put through screw it through into the stud. Exactly. So if that's new work, this is old work? This is old work. So we've got an existing wall, and we're either going back into a hole where a box was, or we've got to you know, pop into a hole. Or we're hallway. looking to add something. All right, how do we make sense of these? All right. This is one of our more common boxes that we use for old work. It's a single gang plastic old work. What you would do is you'd mark the outside of this box, cut the drywall, slide it into place, and then you'd actually tighten those screws and draw that clamp forward to hold it in. It's got a little bit of a flange there. Look at you with the spinny display here. Something like that. Grab right there. And there is no stud that you're going into, so you could pretty much put this anywhere in the right wall. Right in the middle of a bay is fine. If it will hold. All right. Well, what's the difference between, say, this guy and this one here? So this one. You can use on new drywall as well, but this also helps if you have an older home with plaster and lath. If you can find the stud and cut right up against it, you can actually slide this in and screw it from the face. Yeah, look at that. So it's got a screw at an angle coming out that side. And the idea is that you can access it from the front, go through, and drive that into the stud. And secure the box right to the stud, acting like new work, but it's actually old work. Very clever. So these, you call them single gang? And this is a single gang. And then from there, we go to double gangs? Something like a two gang. You can go to a three gang, a four gang. It depends on your application, how many switches you're looking to put in. Right. And, and these two, for example, basically same idea. There's tabs, just twice the space. Exactly. Just a different size, different application. Square or rectangle. Um, and then the round guys? We typically use these for lights. So a bathroom sconce, sconce in a hallway or living room. Mm. That's when we use something like this. Uh, same idea. Cut a hole, slide that in, tighten the screws, it would draw back just like one of these. And if we were going above head into the ceiling, different choices there? Different choices there. In that case, I actually prefer to use metal, even with the non-metallic cable. I'd like to put something like this, a fan-rated box, that'll kind of future-proof things if they want to put a ceiling fan or a heavy light fixture. 
and we'll mount this to the structure. So fan rated box can carry more weight. And so you're going to go, even if you're putting in an overhead light that's not heavy, you're going to do a fan rated box, just sort of the future proof? Just to cover ourselves, yeah. Okay, then that would just go right into the structure. Exactly. But of course, no one's ever put structure in the center <laughs> of the room where I need to put my, my that light. That never happens. Never. So in that case, what do we do? So in that case, that's when we come to this. Which we've seen you install before. Right, same kind of box, but we'd cut that hole, slide the brace in, spin it, mm -hmm until the two ends tighten up against the structure. Once that's tight, you can attach the box and then you can still carry the weight of a heavy fixture or a fan. Literally expands into that gap and locks Correct. into the flanking right. And then you can move that left or right. Exactly. Okay, I think I get it. Um, next time I'm in the aisle, just make sure you got your phone on. Sounds good. Because I'll give you a call. Thank you, Heath. Thanks. Michael? Richard. Nice to see you. Welcome. I appreciate the visit. Nice to be here. You know, I see this typical American split level, and I feel like I'm home. I grew up in one of these buildings. My family and I love it here. Right. So you wrote me about a thermostat? Yes, I did. Um, I've had the house for about four years, and I recently had an energy audit done, and they suggested that I would benefit from a programmable thermostat. Sure, be able to turn the heat on or off during the day when you're not here. Exactly. But that's where I ran into a bit of a hiccup. All right. When I went to install the new thermostat, I realized that the wiring in the house was not compatible with the new thermostat. Okay, so what, you only had a couple wires in here? Exactly. All right, so, all right, so look at this. This thing's as old as the house. How old is the house? <laughs> I think it was built in 1962. <laughs> Probably is. All right, so there's no heat cool switch, so I assume it's heating only, no air conditioning? Correct. All right, so the way this thermostat is right now, it's a simple switch. Yes, I need heat, or no, I don't. And so if I wanted to add programmability, I need some way to power the clock. So I could add a, a programmable thermostat that had a battery in it, and that would mean you have to have on-off periods that are the same every day and different on the weekends, maybe. Okay, but is that something I can access from the internet? No. With any of these modern ones, you could have to have a third wire at least to power it, and, and a modern system with a heating AC would need at least five wires. Okay. And that's where the challenge comes, because it isn't always that easy to run new wires or fish new wires down to the furnace wherever it is. All right, but there is a device that actually could let us reuse these two wires but give you full internet accessibility, all right? Well, that'd be great. So why don't you go turn off the service switch down at the furnace. I'll go grab what we need. Sounds like a plan. Good. All right, let's start by getting the old thermostat out of here. It's okay. a pretty simple device back then. You set the temperature right here. Behind it, it had a couple different ways it could sense. Sometimes it was actually a mercury-filled bulb, and that bulb would fall and make or break based on temperature. This is actually a little bimetallic sensor bulb here. They also have a spring. And so as the temperature changed, that spring would have more or less tension and it would just make that switch. Okay. All right, it has a couple of screws that we will get rid of. You need the right screwdriver to fit it in there. <laughs> I figured that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're so smart. <laughs> so take off that base plate. Might need a little bit of touch up, or may, we might need to cover that with a new base plate. Sure. All right, let's go to the basement. I'll show you the new unit. Sounds great. All right, Michael, here is your oil fired furnace right here. Here's your ductwork going out, return coming in the back, thermostat lead from your thermostat right okay. to here, two wires. So we've all seen some version of a smart thermostat. They often look like this. Sure. And this has a sensing point inside the building, and it's got smarts. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi connection going out, and generally the five wires going down. Okay. So the new unit will actually have all the brains that it ha this has, but it's going to be in two pieces. Oh, okay. So here's the part you'd see upstairs. This is the user interface. It's a touch screen. It's a sensor. It's also where the Wi-Fi will come and go. Okay. But now instead of having the five wires, it's going to just have the same two wires that are up inside the wall that used to just act as a switch breaking and closing right. and opening. Now, it's really a digital highway between this base module and the user interface here, and it'll provide power from the base module upstairs. That sounds fantastic. Okay. Now, what it gives you also is a bunch of choices in the future. Say you want to add air conditioning. Okay. You just wire it out of the module. You want to add ventilation, like fresh air coming in, or even humidity. We can have that all come out of the module. That's great. All right, so we'll start by getting this thing mounted right down here. All right, I'm going to mount it on this pegboard. It's a good central location.
All right, so here is the two wire that comes from our thermostat upstairs. Okay. And it goes right to the obvious spot right here where it says two T-stat. Couldn't be simpler. All right, so it doesn't matter which one is which, the red or the white, because it's polarity insensitive. All right, keep coming. Good. Yeah. Great. All right. All right, our connections over here are R, C, and W. So R is red, W is white, and common is blue. Okay. We can get rid of these extra ones, and I just gotta strip those wires. The blue to common, and the R is red. So I just make these connections at the furnace. White goes to W. Okay. Red to R, and the last one is the common, which is going to power the whole rig. Great. And that's the blue. Red, white, and blue. Perfect. All right. Let's put the upstairs unit on. So this wall plate will do a nice job covering that patch. Great. You don't have to find that paint. <laughs> Drill a pilot hole. job right there. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Great. All right, so the connections are pretty straightforward. You can see the two holes right there. We're just going to push it onto it, and it should make a nice, it does. One, two. Great. And now we just got to feed that into the wall. Get that caught there. All right, you know what time it is? What time? Go turn the power on. Sounds great. Power's back onto the furnace, Richard. All right. You're going to love this thing. Look at this. So it's oh, running it's now, OK? I picked uh, the blue background. You can have any color you want. So you can change your temperature settings right here. And now this is programmed. So that's your phone, OK? okay. So now you can remotely turn it up or down. You can double check actually operation. You can see how often it came on during a given month, right? Wow. So you can see. All right. That's terrific. So you're good to go. Thank you so much, Richard. Have a nice warm winter. I'll try my best. Right. Take care. Good. I love the sort of reuse of the two wires, yeah. although in this case for communication and power. Yeah. The only downside is you still have the control and the sensing in a hallway. What if I wanted it in a different location like the master bedroom? All right, so say you put that in, you find it was the wrong control point. You, they do make a disc like this, it's a sensor, but you'd have to run two wires. So say that you put this in the master bedroom wall, you still have to run two wires down to here. But that communicates with this, which right. communicates this with that. This is the sensing point, but that's the control point. That's how you change the but setting. But in this day and age, Richard, why not wireless? Well, people make wireless uh, indoor thermostats. With that, you know, if you're doing a fair amount of Wi-Fi shipping, that's going to wear the batteries down quite often. I don't think battery technology is there yet. And you worry about radio frequency interference. So anytime I can, I love a clean, beautiful wire to carry digital. Okay. Well, in either case, a good solution for him. All so right. thank you. All right. We'll keep your letters and your emails coming. We'd love to hear from you. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Thewing. For Ask This Old House. Work as a phone, too? You no. Know. Hello. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.